I'm Sarah, and today I want to tell you the story of how we scaled the documentation website of Algolia from middlemen and without middlemen. So I don't know if you already know Algolia. If you do, you know that it is a search engine. But the thing is, Algolia is not only a search engine. It is a full ecosystem that lets you build search experiences from beginning to end. So from uh, inputting your data to the final experience on your mobile or your website. And Algolia right now is a myriad of components. We have REST APIs, we have API clients in more than 10 languages. We have UI libraries. We have integrations with a, a bunch of tools. So this is really all those things and all those components right now, we document them on a single website. And for that reason, we have a full, a full team dedicated to documentation. So this is us. We are the owners and the caretakers of algolia.com slash doc. So you have Mary, our product manager, Maxime, our engineering manager, Peter and Samuel, uh, they are both our tech writers. And then you have Devin and I, software engineers. So the Algolia docs, what does it look like? Right now, we have around 1,000 pages in the documentation. We also have more than 6,000 snippets of code. And we have three interactive tools. So all of that is like API references, guides, FAQs, etc. The interactive tools, we have an interactive tutorial. We have a showcase for our UI libraries. We have a filter validator. So it's really a big thing, a big website with lots of features. And so far, we've been using middlemen. Is anyone familiar with middlemen? Okay, okay, so Millman is a Ruby static site generator. So it's much older than the alternative that you know, like Gatsby, Hugo. Uh, it's been around for years, and for us, it's been extremely helpful. But back in December 2018, so end of last year, we did a huge revamp of our documentation. We, cha we changed almost everything the UI, the information architecture. We added a lot of guides. We also migrated a lot of documentation that was not on the website. So in the process, we tripled the amount of content that we had in the documentation. The problem is, in the process, our build time exploded, literally exploded. Like, you changed something on a layout that was used many, in many places, it could go up to one hour to do a full rebuild. Obviously, that's not good. And so this raised the question of, okay, is middleman fit to scale with us? Is middleman going to be able to follow? So let's talk a little bit about middleman and the way it's built. So middleman is uh, a website generator that is built on a system of plugins. It's all architecture is built on a system of plugins, which makes it really easy to extend, but not really scalable and not really performant. So in a static website generators, most of them, usually you have a bunch of files. You have a bunch of markdown files, for example. You need to read those markdown files. And what you do when you start your local server or when you build your website is that you need to read those files and keep them in memory so you can access them later. So you can display them, you can show lists, you can do whatever. And in middleman, that is called a sitemap. This is central in middleman. The sitemap looks something like that. So this is a collection of all the resources that you have in your website. In middleman, this is a simple list of all the resources that you have in the website. And when you start, so let's say you start your dev server or you build your documentation, middlemen will have to build this sitemap. Read all the files, build a sitemap so you can access it later. And because it is built in a system of plugins, it will have to apply its plugin logic to this sitemap. Let's see how it goes in middlemen. So middleman requires at least seven plugins, bare minimum, to build a sitemap. 
What does that look like? What happens is that you have the sitemap, run, it runs it in, into the first plugin. The first plugin loops over all the resources, apply its logic, outputs it. Passes it to the second plugin, loops over, outputs it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, seven times. And then this is where the crazy stuff starts to happen. It does it one more time. So you can see that it starts to, like even looking at that, you can see that it's beginning to be a problem. So here, for example, we said, okay, I have six pages, nothing. <coughs> so here you have six pages times seven plugins times two passes, 84 loops for six pages. Okay, let's add one page then. I just add one page to my sitemap. It's now seven pages. Really, really small website. Now it's seven pages times seven plugins times two passes, 98 loops. We've, we've come from 84 to 98 loops with one single page. All right. Now let's do another operation that we often do in a website. Let's say I want to fetch all the tutorials, just all the tutorials but because I want to list them, I want to show them in a sidebar, I want to do whatever. Pretty common to do that in a website. I want to fetch all the tutorials. How do I do that with Mailman? Well, because I only have a list of all my resources, all I have to do, and the only thing that I can do is say basically, are you a tutorial? No. 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 Are you a tutorial? Yes. Are you a tutorial? Yes. Okay, cool. I have my two tutorials. I just did six loops to fetch two tutorials. What happens when I grow to 1,000 pages? Still have two tutorials, but now I have to do 1,000 loops to fetch all my tutorials. So every time I, had a, I add a page to this sitemap, I will have to loop as many times as I have pages to fetch the same thing. No matter if I have two tutorials, one tutorial, zero tutorials, I will have, I will have to loop over the entire thing to get my tutorials. So here we have a linear time complexity, which is not going to scale. And this and what I showed you earlier are parts of the reason why middlemen exploded our build time when we grew to over 1000 pages. At this point, we had between 30 and 60 minutes to deploy our website, depending on the kind of change, like we changed, a, we fixed the typo, for example. This could take about 30 minutes. We changed something in a layout. Okay, now 60 minutes. Starting a local dev server, 40 seconds. At this point, we're like, okay, we need to do something. Middleman is definitely not going to grow with us. So we started thinking, okay, we may need to change and we may consider a custom replacement. So here you're supposed to be like, what? <laughs> you want to you wanna build something custom? Are you crazy? Like, this is typically the thing, like, you're, you're not supposed to do that. Please don't reinvent the wheel. Why don't you use one of these guys? They're nice. They're cool. They're super, they're, they're fast. They're well tested. They have a large community please use something from the market. And I hear you. The thing is, we considered, we considered it. We gave it a lot of thought. But you have to consider many things. And that was our thought process. First, you have the amount of pages that we have. Granted, 1,000 pages, that's nothing. But as we've seen, we grew and we tripled the amount of content to arrive to 1,000 pages. And we're not going to stop there. We're going to keep on growing. We still have a lot of documentation to migrate from others, uh, other websites to our main docs. We're going to add guides, we're going to add tutorials, FAQs, and we cannot worry about that kind of things, about 
more pages meaning exploding the build time. So yes, of course, when you look at Gatsby, you look at Gatsby V2, you look at the benchmarks, they're really impressive. But they're really impressive with really small pages. And when you look, you, you dig a little bit deeper, you look into the open issues, you have quite some open issues when it comes to large amount of pages. So we are like, okay, maybe a little orange flag at this point. Then you have the system complexity. Our website is not just a collection of markdown files static. It has a lot of partials, a lot of snippets, a lot of custom front-end logic to make sure that we don't repeat ourselves, that it's easy to edit for everyone contributing to the documentation. So we have a lot of logic in the, in the layout, in the templates, etc. So we need a lot of flexibility. And stuff like ViewPress or DocuSaurus, which are built for documentation, were not flexible enough for us. And then you have the one of the main concerns, at least to me, was the impact of your stack decision on the growth of your squad. So let me explain about that. Take Hugo. Hugo is awesome because it is extremely fast. Arguably, Hugo is the fastest generator out there right now, if you look at benchmarks. The problem is, if you decide to go with something like Hugo, then you will have to hire Go developers. And we thought, eh, Go developers, there are really slim chances that they want to work on a documentation website in a documentation squad. So we're like, okay, Hugo, out. And finally, and our biggest concerns, our biggest concern when we talked about it was that we already have an existing Ruby code base. We spent a lot of time on it. It's there, it works. And also, one thing that is important to understand is that the documentation at Algolia is really at the core. And we have many, like thousands of customers relying on it. We get a lot of PRs every day. And the documentation is not even open source yet. It's only internal and we get a lot of them every day. We cannot spend several weeks or even several months migrating to another language. Like if we go with another language, it's going to take us way too much time and this is not something that we can do. We cannot afford it. So with all the decisions in mind that Sarah just explained, we decided to take the controversial route and actually create our own tool, which we would like to call Frontman. So Frontman is a static website generator in Ruby, just like Middleman, except it's super lightweight. It's less than a thousand lines of code. And in these thousand lines, what we can do is handle different templating languages, not just one per file, but we can actually combine them. For example, instead of just having a markdown file, you can write uh, Ruby in your markdown file by using ERB. We handle page manipulations, meaning you can add redirects, you can add proxies, just like in middleman. Frontman also supports data files. Uh, right now it's just YAML, but we will support JSON as well. And data files are where you use or where you store all your reusable content. So for our documentation example, it would be all the snippets. Another cool thing that we added to Frontman is code highlighting. So we do the code highlighting at build time, meaning that the snippets that we want to render, we generate the markup for it and we just store the HTML instead of doing it during uh, runtime, which most uh, JavaScript libraries do, which means that whenever the page is ready, it still has to browse through all your code and then analyze it. It makes the page, uh, page load a lot faster. Of course, we also support deployments to S3, incremental deployments. So all the files that have been changed will be uploaded to S3 and the rest will remain untouched. We had created a tool in middleman and we definitely wanted it to be part of the frontman core. So we added a link checker Whenever you've built all your files, 
We go over all the URLs that your project contains and all the internal URLs will be validated. So it will check if you don't have any 404s in your page and if all the anchor tags you have are actually correct. And of course, last but not least, we have the sitemap, just like in Middleman. And this is where we get uh, most of our, uh, yeah, our biggest improvement. I want to take you through the process of how we initialize the sitemap in Frontman. So if you remember, Middleman is just a list with all the pages that you have. But let's imagine we're going to add a page to the sitemap in Frontman. So what we would do is we would create nodes for it. Let's say we're going to add the page slash doc slash tutorials slash tutorial one to our sitemap. So first we would create a doc node and to the doc node we would append the slash tutorials node, which leaves us with one more node to add, the slash tutorial one. So you can basically see a tree starting to form here. Now what would happen if we add a second tutorial to this list? We would do the exactly, exactly the same process, except the slash doc and the slash tutorials nodes already exist, so we can skip their generation, just go straight to adding the slash tutorial to. In the end, when we have, uh, when we have added all of our pages, the sitemap will look something like this. It's a tree, a uh, hierarchical tree, with all our pages in it. So, all that remains for us to do right now is to flatten it, so it's easily accessible. We do that by taking every node you see here on this page and put it in a hash map. So instead of just one data source, we actually have two data structures in our frontman sitemap. So you're probably thinking, why are you doubling the amount of nodes in your sitemap? Well, there's a cool feature of Ruby that we make use of. Actually, we store the nodes just once and then we have a uh, pointer in memory and we use it in our hash map. So the key in the hash map would be the URL of the resource and the value would be a reference to the node that's actually in the tree. I'll come back on why this is uh, cool later. Because let's take a step back and recall what uh, what middleman had to do in order to find all the tutorials in our page. Because middleman has a basic array to store all the pages, it has to loop over all the items. So it would go to the first one and check, are you a tutorial? No. Are you a tutorial? No. Are you a tutorial? No. No. Yes. Yes. A linear time complexity to fetch all the sub-resources. Now if we go back to the frontman sitemap, because we know which nodes we want to get. We want to get slash tutorial one and slash tutorial two. And we know that these two tutorials, they belong to the slash doc slash tutorials node. So all that we have to do in frontman to achieve the same effect is point to the slash doc slash tutorials node. So it's one step to get the tutorials. No matter how big our sitemap gets, it will always be one step so that's a constant time complexity, which is performance-wise way better than a linear time complexity. And now we're talking about uh, performance. Let's uh, have a look at the speed improvements that we actually had. Because if you may remember, the reason why we wanted to go away from middlemen in the first place was speed. So with a thousand pages, the actual size of our documentation right now Starting a local server in middlemen took around 28 seconds. This meant it took 28 seconds to get started with developing and seeing the result of your work. In frontman, it just takes two seconds, a 14 times uh, improvement. Then we have the full build, which is generating all the pages in your project. So for us, it's a thousand pages, generating it from scratch. So we start with a blank slate, and we generate all the pages. In middlemen, this could take up to 213 seconds, which is roughly three and a half minutes. 
and frontman front man can actually do it in 24 seconds, so under 30 seconds. And it's get, it gets even crazier with the partial build, where in middleman it takes just under three and a half minutes, and in frontman it takes 16 seconds to generate. So we were encouraged by these results, and we wanted to see what happened when we actually scale our documentation even further. Like Sarah said, the documentation will grow for a long time. Um, so we wanted to see if we made the right decision to go away from middlemen. So we redid the benchmarks, but with 16,000 pages in our documentation. So we copied our documentation 16 times and did the build and started the local server. As you can see in frontman, uh, sorry, in middlemen, it takes almost three minutes to start our development server now, meaning that with every change that you do, you have to wait three minutes to see if it had the desired effect. In frontman, it's five seconds to start it. And the full build is where it gets really, uh, where we knew we really made a good decision. A full build in middleman with this amount of pages takes 817 seconds. That is roughly 14 minutes to build 16,000 pages. In frontman, we were able to do it in 80 seconds or one minute and 20 seconds. That's quite the improvement. And the partial build in middleman, it took even longer than a full build, 844 seconds. So again, it's 14 minutes. And in frontman, it just took over one minute and 15 seconds. So that's quite impressive. We, we knew at this point that we made the right call to move away from middlemen. And it was so impressive, actually, we wanted to test it against other tools. So we decided to run some benchmarks against uh, Gatsby. Gatsby, known for its speed. Gatsby uh, comes with uh, some benchmarks built in. Uh, we wanted to make use of that to test it against frontman. However, the benchmarks in Gatsby are not really representative. Uh, they generate a lot of pages with just one HTML element. And I don't know about you, but I never saw a web page with just one element in it. So we tweaked it a little bit. What we did in the benchmarks is we load a JSON file containing 500 actors. And then for every page that we generate, we take three actors from the data set and display their name. Still, it's nothing compared to a full website, but it gets a bit more closer to reality. And here we have the results of how fast Gatsby does this and how fast Frontman does this. So for 10 pages generated the way I just explained, Gatsby takes around six seconds, while Frontman is under two and a half seconds. If we 10 times uh, the amount of pages, we get seven seconds for Gatsby and still under two and a half seconds for frontman. We go to a thousand, the difference get even, gets even bigger. Uh, Gatsby, it's almost at 12 seconds and frontman is not even at three seconds. If we go to 10,000, Gatsby starts to approach a minute in build time, while frontman still haven't, hasn't even reached the seven second mark. And then 16,000 pages, the amount of pages we tested when we, try, uh, when we tested our scalability. It took over a minute and a half in Gatsby. Still, it's super fast. To generate 16,000 pages in a minute and a half, it's impressive. And Frontman, we did it in less than 10 seconds. So we were really impressed with these results and we hope you are as well. We hope you all want to use frontmen, to migrate to frontmen. So we had to migrate to frontmen at one point. Um, like Sarah said, we couldn't freeze our documentation for a long period of time because we have a lot of external contributors and we just have a lot of content to add. So we chose to migrate in three weeks. We set a deadline for ourselves, three weeks, not any longer. So what we had to do in the three weeks is we had to migrate our code base from middleman to frontman. We had to migrate our CI. We had to migrate our S3 buckets, our deploy cycle. We had to update our indexing process. 
because we use Algolia for our search on the documentation. We had to update the process that indexes everything. We had to refactor and test frontmen so that we were fully confident to use this, uh, this products. We had to fix any bugs and quirks that came up and we had to implement any missing feature that middleman has and frontman hadn't. So we started to migrate our documentation, which is a thousand pages, and it took us just two days. This is a combined effort. So two developers for one day, we were able to migrate a thousand pages from middleman to frontman. This is super quick, especially when you think about the alternatives, which were switching to a completely other tool, which would have taken us weeks or maybe months or remaining with middlemen, but obviously that was not an option. So the migration process is fairly easy, but you still unfortunately can't migrate to frontmen because it's not open source yet. We want to open source it though, by the end of the year or the beginning of next year. Um, before we are able to do that, there are a couple of things we have to do. So we're going to add configuration to frontman. Right now it's perfectly suited for our documentation website. It's not perfectly suited for your project. So we're going to change that. We're going to add a proper error management. This is tricky in Ruby by itself, but we want you to be able to know what went wrong, where it went wrong, and preferably why it went wrong as well. We're going to improve the development experience overall. So we want to add a CLI tool so you can quickly scaffold projects, you can generate files if you want. And we want to add a debug bar in your browser so you know which files are being called, which data is being displayed in your website without too much of a hassle. And of course, we're going to add a world-class documentation to it, like you used, for, uh, used to from us. Uh, <coughs> because we want to make frontmen uh, easy to implement and a delight to work with. Are there any questions? It looks uh, well suited for uh, um, like a hierarchy of folders. Have you thought about tags instead of folders? No, like uh, uh, let's say you know the Gmail tags instead of folders. So, so if you have like if you want to tag like several folders with the same tag, is it working as well? Uh, I mean fast. Uh, no, so we um, we went with URLs because uh, mostly. So when, whenever we generate a sitemap, uh, it's for the pages that are going to be rendered in your, in your website. And most of the websites that are created with a static site generator, they have a sort of hierarchy to it. For example, when you have a blog, uh, most of the URLs are going to have the same structure, like a slash blog slash the, the title. And this way, it's super easy and quick to, to get what you need. Um, so yeah, we, we haven't, uh, we didn't need it in our configuration. So that's why we haven't considered uh, tags as well and why we went with uh, URLs. But it could definitely be, be interesting to look at. Yeah. It was uh, really interesting. Um, I had a question maybe to be, uh, to have a better idea of how uh, it will work or when it's going to be open source. Um, basically, you're gonna install like a dependency, um, add some configuration files, and then that's it. Or like, how how is it gonna work to use a frontman? So it would be like middleman. So either you download everything and like you generate all the files that you have, and you have a gem, like a frontman gem, like you would have a middleman gem, or you create your own project. You already have your structures of folders with your files in it and you install the frontman gem and then you use frontman, you would have an executable that is going to look into your source. So you, it's going to lo loop over all your files and take it as the data source and it creates uh, URLs for it. And then uh, HTML pages for it. So yeah, that would be like any Ruby, uh, Ruby project, uh, it's simply a gem or like in JavaScript you would add a dependency and then you would have an executable that you run to build everything or to create your local dev server. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. What are your motivations uh, for 
uh, taking this to uh, I mean, open sourcing uh, this project because it means uh, having a team that will still contribute, having support for uh, this, um, investing time and, and money uh, in this project. The reason we do this uh, is we want to, of course, share uh, the improvements that you just saw. Uh, we think it's impressive and yeah, it should be available to everyone. And on top of that, uh, Algolia has a, a history of supporting open source projects. Um, for example, we have the uh, doc, sor uh, doc search, sorry, which provides a search functionality for any open source documentation. Um, on top of that, there's a budget at Algolia to support open source projects. So it's really a way to, to give back to the community as well. And to add up to that, so we struggled with middlemen and right now there are still many websites that are running with middlemen and it's perfectly fine because many of them probably have a small amount of pages but we've had conversations of our Twitter uh, uh, in particular with people who use middlemen and they are scaling their website and they're starting to have the exact same issues and those people would be really happy to be able to reuse their code and so that's something that can be really valuable to people who already invested in a Ruby code base but want to scale. I have one question about the, the name and the logo. Um, can you tell me where that came from? <laughs> so the frontman logo, let's go back to it. Back. Yes. All right. So frontman uh, is a little play on words with middlemen. So our engineering manager, Maxime, came up with it. He had a lot of fun with it. And we then decided that the explanation official for it would be that frontman is at the forefront of the X and speed and stuff. And the other thing is the little Batman over here. So when we announced the, we announced the, like the end of our code freeze and the release of the new website with frontman, uh, internally, we were looking, okay, we finished the email and we were like, okay, what should be the subject? And we talked a lot about it. And at some point, Devi, Devin can, uh, came up with it because Frontman sounds like Batman and the title was like, na 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 Frontman. <laughs> so that's where, that's where I come from.